Welcome to our next set of Nye's Night Notes. We are working through Chapter 5, Lesson 6. We are adding linear expressions today, and if you are not sure, this is Mr. Nye in the name of Nye's Night Notes. Let's get it started today. We're going to talk through what is a linear expression. Here, you just listen, don't need to write anything down. So now we're just looking for a linear expression. What a linear expression means, linear has this word line in it. So what a linear expression does is if we graphed a linear expression, it would make a line, a straight line, no dips, no dives, no nothing there. This would not be a linear line because we have some dips along the way. We have some things that do not form a straight line. Linear expressions form this straight line, and we will get to those later this year, but we want to define linear. So here we have an example right from a book about what makes a linear expression, what makes nonlinear expressions. So when we're adding linear expressions, be looking for things that have a coefficient and a variable. Be looking for a coefficient variable mashed together that add a constant. And you could also subtract the constants away from any variables. Things that do not make linear expressions, when you multiply two different variables by a coefficient, when you have something to a, a raised to a power other than 1, because remember if we have 3x to the first power, that means 3 times x. But if I have 3 x to the second power, that means 3 times x times x. So if we take something to an exponent, that makes it nonlinear. And the same thing here, even if we're subtracting stuff away, nonlinear because of the exponent. Don't need to do anything there. We just want to talk about that linear thing because you're going to see that bouncing around so they know what that means. And just think linear, straight line. Linear expressions. You're going to have, um, I believe, four steps to this. So when you write down your notes, because you're stopping, stopping, listening, and writing down, um, this is our blue. You'll see this in blue on every next slide or every next uh, process along the way. Don't need to write this down every single time. I would start with this at the very top of my heading, and then um, make sure that you write down the example and then the rules. We'll have four rules, four examples, and we'll work through those. So this is our sample problem, so make sure you write this down. 2 times the quantity x plus 3 plus 3x minus 1. So when you're adding linear expressions, um, first thing we're going to do is turn all subtraction to addition. You'll see this picture right from my um, integer cabinet that you see in the room every single day. And we're going to go through those energy rules again. Remember, we, the matrix says subtraction does not exist, so we're always going to change it to addition. We do that in two ways. First, turn the subtraction sign to addition, then make the second number opposite. I see one subtraction sign within here, so as I transition, I'm just going to turn that subtraction sign to addition. I see nothing in this first term. Um, so make sure that you're jotting this down as we do right to. So I'm going to hey, say 2x plus 3. Nothing I need to change there. Plus, nothing I need to change. Now I need 3x plus, turn subtraction sign to addition, and then make the second number opposite. Plus, negative 1. So that's my first step. Turn all subtraction, signs, all subtraction to addition. Step number 2. You're not going to need to do this every single time, but the thing I need to write down is, again, our next progression of our example. And then number two, distribute if necessary. You wrote this down on the last page already. No need to write it again. So just make sure that you're working through your rules and just kind of making a nice list in your notebook. Don't need to write this thing in blue. How do I add linear expressions? You have that as your heading already. I'm just going to do it for consistency on each time we go through this video. So now, um, distribute if necessary. There's going to be a lot of times you don't need to distribute. Here we will because we have this 2 being multiplied by the quantity x plus 3. So here I do need to distribute. So I'm going to draw my distribution lines, and I'm just going to distribute before I can do any adding. 2 times x is 2x, 2 times 3 is 6, add them in the middle because I have my addition sign right here, and then I'm just going to continue on what I have because I don't need to distribute on the right side. So now I just have 3x plus negative 1. You'll see I took the um, parentheses away because I can't operate anything in here because I don't know what x is. So therefore, there's no need to group those together because the associative property tells me I can group any numbers as long as I'm adding the entire time. I can do any addition in any order, grouping in any way. So I don't need those parentheses anymore. So now I've distributed, and now we're moving forward with our step number three. Step number three. So this is that example that we had written last time. And so now we're just going to shape out our like terms. We did this in our last math class. Um, and what I mean shape out, when we, when we shape out like terms, we're just going to literally draw shapes under terms that have the exact same like terms or the same labels. So I'm going to start with some triangles, and I'm going to draw triangles under everything that has a label of x. Um, I have 2x and a 3x. Those are the same label. They're like terms. Therefore, they get the same shape. Then I have two constants. I have 6 and I have negative 1. Therefore, I'm going to draw some other shapes there. So I'm going to do some circles around my constants. I've now shaped out my like terms. Again, make sure this gets in and our shaping out of our, um, our, shaping out of our terms gets into your notes. Finally, fourth step. Now that I have, my, um, I have my terms shaped out, 
I can just add those common shapes. You know, like we said, associative property says I can group things in any order. So I'm gonna have, I have uh, a triangle here and a triangle here. I have addition signs all the way through, so that means I'm gonna do 2x plus 3x. How many x's do I have then? Well, I have five x's. Because if you think about it, I have two x's and then adding three more x's to it. Yeah, I'm gonna get five x's in total. So now I added my two triangles together, and now I'm going to add my two circles together. I have 6 plus negative 1. So now I just add 6 plus negative 1. 6 plus negative 1 equals 5. So now we're at, I can simplify my expression. Now I'm left with 5x plus 5. And there we go. I ha can't do anything further. I can't simplify anymore. I have two um, unlike terms. I have an x and I have a constant. Can't add them together. I have no idea what x is. And you can't add those things with different labels. You can only add things with the same labels or those like terms. So this is me adding linear expressions. And that's our process. I'm totally done. To finish off, we have our joke of the day. Why do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z all hate hanging out with the letter N? Why would they hate hanging out with the letter N? I love the letter N. It has all the start of all my names. Well, they hate hanging out with him because he is the center of attention. The center of attention. One, two, three, four letters in front, four letters behind. The center of attention. Hate hanging out with them. So there's your joke of the day. Make sure that you get attention written down into your books, and then we'll process through how to add linear expressions starting tomorrow. Thank you very much. Have a great day.